Hey everyone, uh, today we're just going to be going over a quick uh, water fall tutorial. So, uh, if you want to go ahead and download the files underneath this video to get started and extract those to your desktop, go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm just going to start from the import stage since we've already gone over extracting everything before. So, uh, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to create this folder in the content section called water tutorial. Uh, you can call yours waterfall or just water shade or whatever you feel like. Uh, and I'm just going to import and I'm going to find that water d uh, tarja file and that random normal tarja file and just import those. <laughs> and that will give us the basis for our texture. Now also I'm going to import uh, those two meshes that were included. They're just some very rough uh, preset static meshes I made specifically for this video. Uh, make sure you don't import them as a skeletal mesh. And as you can see, they're you know just pretty much basic curved planes that we're going to apply this material to. And uh, we can scale those up and see how they look later. So with these four files imported, I'm just going to go ahead and right click in this folder and create a new material. And I'm just going to call this waterfall underscore uh, this will be our waterfall material. So we're going to open that up. We'll bring us over to the main screen. <laughs> All right. So what we want to do uh, first off is just drag that waterfall uh, views and that random normal into here. And again, these are just really rough textures to get this material going. If you have, uh, you know, some high resolution textures or you know other textures you want to use for this feel free to do that as the techniques will be the same uh, we're just gonna have those in our scene so first we're gonna go ahead and set up our base color so I'm just gonna right click and find what we call a texture coordinate so texture coordinate node is what we're gonna start off with and then we're gonna drag off that and this is what's gonna give us the motion in our waterfall essentially we're going to look for something called a panner node and we're just going to make sure that texture coordinate is plugged into the coordinates of our panner and we're just going to hook that straight into the UVs of our texture. Uh, this texture is a little bright for me so I'm just going to go ahead and do a multiply to kind of bring that brightness down really quick. I'm just going to maybe cut it in half see what that looks like. Yeah it's a little better. It's just, I just don't like how bright that texture is. Uh, and now once we get that set up, we're just going to drag that into our base color. Uh, next we want to set up the metallic and the specular nodes for our waterfall. So I'm just going to do a search for a constant. And this first constant I'm just going to plug in to be 0.2 and set that as our metallic value. Uh, now we don't have to make another one, we can just take this one right here, hit control C, control V, uh, and then we're going to plug this one into our specular, but I'm going to change this value uh, to 1. So again, the metallic value is 0.2, the specular value is 1, and those are both just uh, constant nodes. Okay, next what we want to do is we're going to hook up our normal map for this. So we're just going to take this texture sample, and since we want the normal to pan also, we're just going to plug in that UV into, or that panner into our UV of our normal map, and then just hook that straight into our normal. Uh, now we're going to actually build the refraction for our water. As you can see, it's kind of, no, pretty bland right now. It looks more like ice and a blue planet than it does water. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build that. So first section we need for that is called a depth fade node, depth fade. And we're just going to leave uh, those values unchanged for now. We'll go back and mess with them in a second. Uh, the second node we're going to need is a Fresnel. And then this is just where we get to do all sorts of crazy cool stuff uh, with these Fresnel nodes. Uh, so off this Fresnel node we're going to do a 1 minus X node. So in the rollout it's just called 1 minus uh, underneath the math section. 
And what this does is it returns the inverse, essentially, of what our Fresnel is. So we want the Fresnel to be inverted so it starts refracting around the edges more. Uh, next we're going to hook this into a multiply. And then just for organization purposes, I want my depth fade to be plugged into A and my Fresnel 1 minus to be plugged into B. Uh, as a multiply, it wouldn't really matter if those are plugged into A or B, but just for cleanliness, I like them like that. Uh, next, what we want to do is we want to make another constant. And I'm just going to call this uh, refraction constant, essentially. And we're going to set this value to 2. Uh, and if you wanted to make material instances of all this, you could turn these into scalar parameters and you could change those at uh, runtime in your material instance if you needed to. But constants are working for now. Uh, so off of that 2, we're going to drag and add another multiply. And we're going to multiply that refraction with our uh, depth fade Fresnel multiply. And then we're going to Oh, we need our refraction and our opacity actually for this material. So before we can plug this into refraction, uh, we're going to go to this waterfall material and uh, over in the blend mode, we're going to need to change this to translucent. So that way our opacity and our refraction are active channels now. So our refraction is hooked up now. And for the opacity, it's actually pretty neat what we've done. We've uh, created an opacity using a Fresnel depth fade, so we can take the output of this multiply and plug that into our opacity. And that will give us this uh, really cool looking uh, water shader you'll see right here in a second. And you can change what it's previewed on uh, in the previewer. You see little meshes down here, so you can see what it will kind of look like on a plane. Uh, now you'll be like, oh, but it's not actually moving yet. So far we just have this kind of mirror looking water. You are absolutely correct. Uh, so what we need to do is up in our panner node, uh, the way I've UV'd these planes, uh, I UV'd them so that all the faces are uniform facing directions, meaning we'll only need to change the speed on Y to do that. And since we want them to be panning down instead of positive Y, I'm just going to go ahead and type in negative 1 for the Y speed and that should give us the motion effect. Alright, awesome. Uh, so you can change that speed based on what you need. If you need it to be faster, like it's you know getting crazy, you can change it. Or if your model uses UV a different way and you have them all uniform X, you can change those either positive or negative X and that will animate based on each side. So a lot of different uh, variations you can get going on in there. <laughs> but for uh, these models what you'll need is you'll need negative one in the speed for y. Uh, that's it. I'll just do a quick overview of all those nodes plugged in. This is again a very very basic uh, water material. Uh, we'll change a couple more depth fade or er, options in the depth fade in Fresnel really quick to give that slightly more real fall off. So in our depth fade, we're going to change the fade distance to 250. And over in our Fresnel node, we're going to change that exponent from 5 to 1. And that should give us a slightly more translucent looking water. There we go. Uh, so there you go. That is a very, very simple introduction to panning water. Uh, obviously, there's far more complex ones out there if you want to take a look at that. I hope that everyone has found this useful, though. See you all in the next video.